Today we have an all-star lineup of uh, global and regional experts on counterterrorism and terrorism in East Asia, as well as uh, the implications for global governance. So we'll address all of these issues in two, two panels today. But it is my pleasure um, that uh, Mr. Moon young uh, who is the chief of the National Counterterrorism Center of the Republic of Korea, has joined us and agreed to give our keynote speech, speech today. Um, he also serves as a Secretary General of the National Counterterrorism Commission and has contributed to the establishment and development of the National Guidance on Counterterrorism Activities. Mr. Moon holds responsibility and authority for issuing the National Terror Alert, as well as organizing the overall national CT activities and coordinating roles and functions of relevant agencies in South Korea. As head of the counterterrorism headquarters for the Pyeongchang Olympic Games, Mr. Moon has led the Security Control Room, International Intelligence Cooperation Office, immigration control teams on the ground, and secured the safe and successful Olympics in cooperation with the VIP uh, Security Control Center, as well as the Management T uh, Task Force for North Korean Participation. Mr. Moon has served as the commander and staff of the, Ch of the Special Operations Forces until he retired as a deputy commander of the Special Operations Command in South Korea. Uh, Mr. Moon has uh, served in the Iraq War and in East Timor and has carried out numerous joint operations. Um, and he is currently working on his PhD in his spare time um, at the Gyeongnam Graduate School. Uh, so please welcome Mr. Moon young gi from South Korea. Thank you. Yes, good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, your generous interactions. I'm uh, Yong Ki Moon, the chief of the National Counter Center of Republic of uh, Korea. Uh, first, I wish to, to extend my deep appreciation to Dr. Jung and the other uh, members of Brookings Institution. It's my great honor to deliver a keynote address before the most renowned expert. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to share with you the lessons learned uh, from the counterterrorism activities during the Pyeongchang Olympic Games. Uh, let me briefly highlight the counterterrorism effort in Korea. Prior to 1980s, uh, South Korea took reactive approaches when it comes to down, come down uh, to its counterterrorism measures reacting to the terrorists from North Korea. Uh, many of you would uh, remember the Blue House raid in 1968 and the Rangoon bombing uh, in 1983 are the, the primary example of this approach. The Korean government has been uh, responding to uh, this kind of North Korea's provocation with the integrated defense system. The, however, so, our counterterrorism effort has been substantially uh, intensified in the 1980s uh, since South Korea hosted two major international events, 86 Asian Games and 88 Seoul Olympics. Since then, uh, the national counterterrorism guidance was established by the executive order. Accordingly, the national counterterrorism effort has been expanded to be able to deal with the range of threat posed by international terrorists. After 9-11 and Paris uh, devastating terror attack in 2015, the government established the terror prevention law in March 2016. KNCCT uh, was organized and I became the first chip of the center. These days, new terrorist threats are looming on the horizon of South Korea. For instance, we have over 2 million uh, foreigners, an uh, increasing number of uh, refugees, and uh, multi-ethnic families raising new uh, security concerns. Uh, currently, the Korean government is monitoring around 50 suspects identified as 
uh, terrorism risks. With all uh, this experience and effort, the terrorism-related circumstances uh, have been successfully controlled. Also, uh, we had a strict gun control and explosive uh, policies compared to uh, the most of the other countries. Uh, thus, South Korea is considered as one of the safest countries in the world, despite uh, ongoing military tensions with North Korea. Now, uh, I'd like to turn to our preparation activity before the Olympic and the security activities during the Olympics. Uh, North Korea carried out the six nuclear test in September 2017. The North also launched the ICBM of Hwasong-12 uh, three months before the Olympics. As a result, many countries and media raised a serious concern about the safety in Korean Peninsula. Uh, to address the release of this security concern, we invited the all key actors related to the Olympics for security briefing. The hundreds of people, including national delegate, media, and government agents, attended the two-day meetings in which uh, we openly discussed potential security concern and uh, countermeasures. And so all the participants were determined to be there. And we learned that the uh, active flow of information was crucial. And next, uh, I'd like to uh, share how we developed the counterterrorism plan for the Olympics. Uh, there are three different phases involved. The estimate, uh, establishment of counter division headquarters uh, a year and a half prior to Olympic was a uh, first phase. In February nine, uh, 2017, uh, one year before the game, the headquarters held a pretest event in order to identify potential threats and risks. We developed a, a basic security plan based on the results of those tests. We were able to recognize potential vulnerabilities. In the second phase, the three months before the Olympics, uh, we held the final drill. All agencies rehearsed the security plan to prepare for possible terrorist attacks. Uh, during the last phase, uh, 50 Days before the game started, uh, we set up 18 security command center for all venues and key facilities. We opened the all uh, social security control room and uh, activated the on-site safety system. Uh, during the uh, opening ceremony rehearsal, uh, we tested all uh, counter-terrorism measures and the necessary equipment. Uh, transportation for spectators and athletes, and the traffic control system was searched. The counterterrorism headquarters carried out the three months of major drills for uh, better cooperation and teamwork among uh, governmental agencies. After each drill, the headquarters uh, reviewed the result to improve the, the procedures. The security control room was separated 24 hours to monitor security measures throughout the Olympics. It was also monitoring the security situation of the 18 venues and athlete villages. It maintained the real-time communication with its subunit through a daily update on uh, counter-terror activities and the other security matters. Yes, uh, one of most impressive counterterrorism aspects was the uncover armed forces operations. A special counterterrorism unit was stationed outside the venues to ensure all time security. The undercover uh, SWAT team and uh, QRFs operated at key facility to immediately 
respond to the emergency situation. And high tech security systems such as uh, uh, intelligent CCTVs and the facial recognition devices also contributed to the public safety. Our prevention activities started several years ago. Registration of terror-related suspects was one of the initial steps. In April 2017, the Ministry of Justice adopted uh, the Advanced Passenger Information System, so-called API. Uh, this program uh, was soon implemented 168 airport in 45 major countries. Uh, the API allow passenger data to be shared across the governmental department to prevent the potential terrorist suspect from the attempting to enter the country. Uh, the, the government had updated the list of 36,000 suspects with the cooperation of foreign intelligence agencies. This updated list enabled uh, us uh, to successfully identify one suspect who entered the South Korea under a different name. Uh, this was uh, possible uh, because of the close relationship with the foreign intelligence agencies. Uh, we have uh, expanded uh, the number of Olympic uh, International uh, Intelligence Corporation participating countries and agencies. The number uh, 34 countries and 52 intelligence agencies. Uh, this was the largest international intel operation in our history. In particular, the CIA offered analytics tools and techniques uh, to identify uh, vulnerability at our facilities and FBI uh, provided the additional information on foreign terrorist suspect. Uh, thankfully, we successfully identified the foreign terrorist suspect among 19,000 ID card applicants during the uh, verification <coughs> process. Mm. Uh, there were uh, lessons uh, learned during the Olympics. Uh, first, uh, we realized that uh, uh, we should have uh, scheduled uh, things earlier to provide uh, sufficient time and resources to educate and train our 15,000 volunteers. And the extreme weather made the security checks longer than what we originally expected. Uh, there are also malfunctions of our equipment. And we realized the importance of a clear communication. A coherent policy implementation was a very challenging task. For example, we had uh, categorized the uh, tumbler as a restricted items, the souvenir shop at the venue were selling uh, them and at the same time. Yes, uh, lastly, uh, I'd like to share few of future challenges, not just restricted to the Olympics and international uh, games, but uh, rather, they, rather in a uh, general sense. Tomorrow, a single uh, terrorist can cause far more shocks and fear than 9-11. Not group. And cyber space became their playground and uh, Artificial intelligence would be their toys. We might not be able to identify any indications. As you know, the, there were uh, various indications during 9-11. Ubiquity and uh, uh, increasing number of terrorists are, are taking advantage of the uh, ubiquity and anonymity of the cyberspace. Uh, this make it impossible for us to prevent all threat. Uh, next, the cultural uh, differences along with the language barriers uh, were another challenging aspect. Just like the same, I was in Kashmir, in East Timor, 
uh, Iraq and Afghanistan regions. Uh, both uh, vertical and horizontal intelligence sharing are required in a timely manner. Next, in conclusion, uh, thanks to uh, the international intelligence community, I would like to call our Olympics as uh, three uh, zero games. There are no crimes and no absent athlete. I'd like to thank every one of you uh, for giving me your undivided attention and for your precious time. Uh, thank you once again for helping me here uh, today. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, if you have uh, any uh, question, please do. I will do my best to answer them. And I want to speak through Korean interpreter. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Terence Taylor from the International Council for Life Sciences here in <clears throat> Washington, D.C. Um, so you, you mentioned towards just, the... Just me, please. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. <laughs> you, you touched on uh, some scientific and technical developments towards the end of your remarks and looking ahead. Um, uh, yeah. Probably one of the... Um, characteristics terrorists can exploit is surprise, both in the, the weapons and equipment and so on they might use, um, and of course for the place and, and target of the attack. So surprise is very much in the hands of the terrorists. I wonder what, and looking ahead at these scientific and technical developments, what concerns you most uh, amongst those developments? You've touched on a um, artificial intelligence and, and cyber, but other perhaps uh, less commonly used techniques, such as the use of chemicals at Kuala Lumpur, for example, uh, uh, two years ago against um, a, a Korean, North Korean target. So, so what concerns you most in these scientific and technical developments? Thank you. Yeah, uh, comes. Well, thank you. Uh, maybe you are from a military as well. In our military, we have a saying, uh, the Confucius has uh, some advantages. Uh, operatives have uh, advantages. Uh, they can choose their own time, uh, own place and their means. Uh, however, the defense uh, cannot choose any of these, of course, uh, because uh, we do not know when the attack will take place. And as such, whenever there is an operation that takes place uh, in a regular war, uh, intelligence uh, becomes very important. You have to know uh, what may happen, and you assume or you give uh, probabilities uh, to certain activities that may take place, and then that's where you commit uh, most uh, most of your resources. And otherwise, uh, you have to save your assets, right? So all the uh, terrorism is not the same as uh, regular warfare. It's uh, important that uh, we. Uh, have to focus uh, our abilities and assets on uh, our best intelligence. Uh, and as to the future challenges, uh, the intelligence itself and once we have in indications, even if uh, the intelligence itself is not 100% uh, reliable, and once we have these indications, we act upon those. And uh, 
uh, the way we act on it is uh, more of a preventive uh, nature. Once we have an indication, uh, we commit our assets and then prevent uh, what may have uh, maybe in brewing. And that's our uh, best uh, defense. I hope that was enough. Uh, thank you very much for your remarks. My name is Jeff Feltman. I'm here at Brookings. But until recently, I was the UN Undersecretary General for Political Affairs. And I had the honor to accompany Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General, to the opening ceremony of the, of the Pyeongchang Olympics. So my first um, comment is simply to say congratulations that for those of us who were there, it really was very, very smooth, very, very organized. It was clear there was lots of security, but it was not disruptive to the ability to participate and enjoy the opening ceremony. So congratulations for all this work. When I was at the UN, two of the hats I wore were for five, five of the six years I was there were related to counterterrorism. I was the head of the Counterterrorism Implementation Task Force, which is a coordinating body inside the UN on counterterrorism issues, and I was the executive director of the UN Counterterrorism Center, which was a capacity and technical assistance small unit inside the UN to try to help countries um, implement Security Council resolutions related to terrorism. One of the sort of frustrating aspects of all of this, working in the UN context on counterterrorism, was the um, difficulty in encouraging countries to share their information, to share their experiences, their lessons learned more broadly. And I was wondering, um, given the experience you had with the Olympics, how are you sharing this more broadly with other countries that would be um, hosting major international events? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your uh, question. Uh, to be honest, uh, Korea, we have uh, been able to come this far uh, with the help of the international community, and uh, we are acutely aware of the help that we have received uh, from outside. And this uh, goes to the civilians as well as the government uh, personnel. So I think uh, we are trying very hard uh, to be a, a responsible uh, international uh, member. And uh, we, because have uh, received many help uh, from overseas before, uh, we are trying to also reach out and to provide uh, help uh, to others whenever we can. As such, outreach is an important uh, part of our government activities. Earlier, there was a mention of API, and uh, this API cannot be a success without the help of each individual members. And uh, when it comes to uh, terror, possible terrorist suspects, uh, uh, we do not have all that many people on our list, actually. Uh, but uh, we do provide uh, this uh, list uh, to uh, other uh, countries and also for certain uh, known terrorists, uh, we uh, try to arrest them and uh, put them uh, through the uh, justice system. And all these uh, things, uh, we do it in conjunction uh, with the international community. And of course, we have this special situation where we have to deal with the threats from uh, North Korea. And uh, North Korean provocations are, we think of it as a terrorism as well. Uh, and so uh, from the North Koreans, uh, we have a constant fear of uh, terrorist uh, activities uh, that, take, that may take place. And also we have uh, people from coming in from outside, overseas, uh, who may ha harbor uh, terroristic uh, thoughts. And as such, it's important for us to help out and also receive help uh, from the international community. Uh, thank you. David Maxwell Foundation for Defense and Democracies. Thank you for your presentation. Um, what what do you uh, attribute uh, your success to? Is it deterring the terrorist attack or good intelligence and prevention? And if deterrence uh, is a factor in in, 
in your success, you know, what were the specific deterrence measures uh, that, that you can share with us that, that you deemed as uh, successful? Well, the fundamentals are important, right? Uh, in the uh, 60 years uh, of our uh, history, uh, we have been in constant conflicts with North Korea. So whenever our agencies, especially intelligence agencies, uh, get involved, uh, we have known uh, how to coordinate with one another very well. Uh, we have been put through a uh, fire uh, by North Korea for long, so we have uh, better uh, fundamentals uh, through these uh, well-trained uh, people. And as to the most recent activity that occurred, uh, it's uh, the power of intelligence. Uh, we have been able to gather many quality at the intelligence. And uh, honestly, uh, without good intelligence, uh, you can't carry out a good uh, anti-terrorist uh, measures. Thank you. Uh, hopefully that was good enough. Uh, May I just one more question, please? Suno from NCTC. Um, can you briefly talk about the major terrorism trends that you're witnessing in South Korea? And also, um, can you describe what your uh, your priority concern when it comes to prospects of terrorism in your country? Yeah. Yes. Uh, in Korea, other than what I have already discussed, we are worried about uh, homegrown uh, terrorists. And also, we have uh, many uh, houses uh, which are nuclear-sized, uh, uh, one-person house households. And then also, there are uh, broken families uh, that uh, take, are taking place uh, quite a bit in Korea. And uh, people have a difficulty uh, differentiating between the cyber reality, uh, cyber reality and actual reality. And as uh, these young people grow up in the cyberspaces, uh, would they really be able to distinguish between the reality and the cyber reality? And uh, they are very prone to uh, being uh, the set of uh, new ideas, uh, the new ideologies uh, that may be exposed uh, to them uh, through these uh, cyberspaces. So maybe it's not just limited to Korea, but it's uh, something that may uh, take place uh, in the international arena. And it seems uh, uh, many uh, countries are coming to realize that they need to come together uh, to have uh, uh, act, uh, to have more effective uh, counter uh, terrorist uh, programs. So maybe it's very possible. It's just the lone wolves uh, would be a more of a terrorist uh, a trend than a group. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos from Brookings.